banner below the stream. That's a beautiful hook to start. So you can get a $15 free bet for new customers as Bet Boom. It'll provide you as uh, they provide a first blood on the side of aiming gladiators with that timber saw <laughs> chase. Even having the Ricky go in be just a moment. There we go. Flaming spears. Hey, it doesn't even have Inify yet, so it just shows exactly how confident Quinn is. It's going to take a heap of damage though from Thompson. And uh, yep. The Huskar almost gets oh. taken out in the process. Charge for Quinn does get charged down by Thompson and yeah, not going for the inner fire in the Tundra team. No, I don't think they're going to be too afraid of doing things like oh. that as we see the Primal Beast diving right in on Quinn once again. Barely able to win it out. Means he's going to avoid at least the XP gains against him. You can see uh, Thompson bringing out just the good old uh, roar <laughs> voice lines on the Primal Beast. Uh, Duracho is going to get taken down this time around. Uh, Crystal Maiden was a bit too far. Uh, the mid laners have barely gotten any creep kills in the process. They've just been focused on trying to kill each other. Quinn does have his inner fire this time around. He's going to use it to keep his enemy at bay. Charge from Thompson is going to cancel. That actually needs to run away because the TP came through. And that is Tofu joining in, helping out Quinn and keeping... Primal Beast and have the space to start beast. toasting him in fire. Yeah, that's a bit rough. Oh, Quinn. And he's still here. He's going to have a, a very unhappy surprise. Oh, but he's still able to get the trample. Nice. <laughs> oh, that mid matchup is not necessarily... I mean, Quinn... That's surprising that not uh, that only Tofu has rotated as well from the supports. Bottom lane, Duracho. Thompson's on top of the Pudge. Pudge is pretty tanky, but not tanky enough. And with the Pulverize, it will be enough to secure a pretty big kill. That is the top net worth of Gaming Gladiators out. Currently, the lanes are going pretty A-OK. -okay. Nice hook back. They also have Tofu there for another slow to throw out. Smoke as well. Can he get out of there? Actually, 33 is trying to dip, but luckily enough, somebody had another freeze at the very ready. Taken down anymore. With Thompson, he's looking for a possible catch on to Quinn. Nice interrupt there with the inner fire. Dofu rotates the troops together with Selly as well. He's stuck inside the smoke and nothing he can do. Thompson's gonna get overwhelmed. They turn their attention to snaking and the roaming supports of Gaming Gladys with the body blocks as well from Tofu just to try and make sure that the kill is secured. He managed to pick it up himself with a killing screen now on the Ricky. Trying to catch out this Huskar, but now with the armlet. A lot of ways to easily get this burst HP to help him sustain, and I don't think there's any way for the beast to respond to this. It's going to be the same with the Rubik as he's taken out with a good old life break leaping on through. And Tofu with the smoke as well, making sure there's no lift shenanigans coming through. Here we have Nightfall together with Thompson going in for the kill on Quinn. Can they get the catch? Quinn actually gets the kill onto Snake and trying to run away. A Broodmother coming in from the side. There's a little bit too much with three cores hunting him down. And this time... Well, minute mark. So much gold. Oh, Pudge in trouble. Tops him from behind. Duraccio. The charge actually is a... Uh, nope, I'm out of here. Shenanigan hook comes through. Oh, my lord. The longest hook you've ever seen. But it's going to connect Duraccio with a beautiful pick. There is a support nearby, and they want to pick off that Rubik again, or whoever else they can find. Sentry will save the Clockwork's life. No one. That's a big catch on Tinteraccio. Did not manage. Doesn't have flash heat for that matter available, so they do get a quick kill. Doesn't need it. Just needs the silence to shut them down. No need to set it up. He's able to find all that impact even with the Sleeping Dark Shard unavailable. Don't forget, we're just at the 13-minute mark. It's so early on, and this Primal Beast is ready to chase. Finally, a bit of revenge on the Gaming Gladiators as they slam the Ricky down. Duracho, he's got his axe fully done. Blink Dag is going to be next. Hope Shot comes in. With the Metamorphosis on top, Duracho does not manage to stay alive even with the Ricky Smokes. Dobson doesn't even stop there. He charges. You can see he's got that Manta, he's immediately going for that good old Scotty, and oh no, they're aware that he's oh, trying Quinn. to go for this on the Oscar, but he has a BKB, 
and the stun goes through the follow-up with the silence with the Ricky and he's denied his cheeky little play demolished by the TV demolished would be a pretty fair way to describe it the fact that Primal Beast going into low of Thompson's a bit oh, dangerous. Oh, the interrupt right there. Trying to use the punch hook to save the Huskar, but is denied. That's the first life down. It is with the Silent Snake King getting harassed by Tofu. Nice ulti from Sunry. Gets interrupted though with the right Right is going to go for the Nom Nom. Smoke onto Thompson. Can he get away? They're trying to continue the fight. The stolen smoke screen comes into play, and they're actually going in. Finally, Ace joins the fight, but with that... Thunder Nightfall will be able to heal back to full Stolen Timbers chain by Saxe. He's trying to be such a big nuisance and he's being successful right now. Ace, the hook is going to miss. He is in trouble. He's actually going the opposite direction to make sure his teammates don't get overwhelmed. He picks up the room timber with Ace. Is he going to be able to get out of there? Oh, the timber chain misses. And he's able to get himself out of dodge. Who cares? The Aegis was lost, obviously, but they did at least force out the Metamorphosis, and Rachu, very close to death, will manage to get another Flesh Heap set. They are trying to at least make sure he doesn't have the Ancients to farm, and that's going to give away exactly where Game and Gladiators are playing. He, Korea gets taken down with the Point Booster. That is very problematic, because that is his Scotty that would otherwise be finished. In the meantime, 33 is going to be hunted down, dropping low, slept in the process, and this smoke screen on top of snaking will make sure there will no, not be any more spells coming. Dragon himself to being built up as well on the Huskar. That will be a bit more problematic for the TB and other heroes on the opposing side. Because there are BKB piercing spells. The lift drag back, smackdown with the pulverize and a quick kill onto Quinn. That's the downside of playing on a hero like Huskar. You play low HP most of the time and just jump onto Saxon. They will find themselves. A Rubik who tries to force F towards the low ground will not be successful. They freeze Thompson, but with the BKB should be able to just... The flank in. They're going to be contacting this clockwork. He's going to be a dead man on the snake game. Even the Huskar rotating in. Oh, they even use the dark for good measure. Well, they do have... Uh... Aya uh, Scotty finally done on the TV. So it's uh, getting a little bit scary as well. Another sleeping dart comes into play. They're trying to go in for 33. Can they hunt him down on the opposite side? There is going to be a metamorphosis pop. Nightfall gets a kill. Blink him forward. They're trying to get rid of the supports quickly, but the damage from Nightfall is going to be enough. He is pumping out a lot of damage in the process. Quinn's going to leap in forward. The Scotty is doing its work. Quinn can't really heal. But not, TB can't really sunder. He's gonna get mowed down. And now Thompson gets slept up again by Tofu with another smoke screen. No BKB available. 33 is just trying to give him an aura to be able to keep him alive. That will be unfortunate. Yeah, and when the Huskar Axe comes out. Oh, I don't know what they're going to do. That's pure damage right there, coming in from Saxap, blowing his opponent up. They quickly interrupt Duracho. Nice pulverized damage coming in with the BKB. Duracho's trying to run away. Can he stay alive? Hook stolen by Saxa. Drags Duracho back, will cost him his life. And Duracho's still not dead somehow. Gets the blink off a little bit further forward, but will eventually be overwhelmed. And right now, they do not have Quinn. They do not have Duracho. They everything alive that they can. Well, Roche number two, free shard, uh, will be the target here. They are uh, trying to have a little bit of a war of vision. And Saxa on his trusted Rubik is uh, singing one of the strongest, most painful spells this game. The Chakram, pure damage, something that a Huskar is really bad at. And speaking of which, he's gonna get chopped down by Saxa! Just as that continues, they're gonna go for more. No weapon available for the Huskar. Ace with the BKB, can the Timbersaw get away? The Nightmare comes in to make sure there's no more Primal on his tail. The rest of the team can they catch up. It is 33, but he doesn't have any good control for the timber saw to take him down. I hear the nom nom from the dismember. Pudge is fighting in one different direction. Ace is gonna go for the TP out. Can Ace get away? No, he cannot, because again, Saxa is right there. 
when needed. Thompson chasing for Duraccio. BKB versus BKB. Hook comes back. Thompson is running out of his BKB, but there's the army. The Spiderlings are charging in. Sunry pop back in the process. They're gonna spot out Tofu. Can Tofu get away? He does have a bit of an escapist movement, but the Vicky will be slept by his own dart. Double jump to the side, taken down in the process. Networth has been nullified and up as well. Because they, you really saw it on that timber saw. He was hard to lock down without uh, the Rubik there. And that's the only thing that they really have for the lockdown. Speaking of which, the rock throw comes into play. Hook shot as well. The full control. The entirety of Tundra just surrounding Ace. I don't think they need it. Oh my goodness. This is a siege on the base. Oh, Gladiators. Yeah, they Saksa. don't want to buy back on this Tide Hunter, but now. Not the Tide Hunter, oh my goodness. Saxa is so, many so nasty. <laughs> can displace the enemies pretty quickly. Speaking of displacement, Nightfall needs to be careful. Does have the Aegis. And he's going to get dragged back in the process. Pops the PKB. Metamorphs is immediately going in for the fight. They find Ace on the side. He's completely uh, separated from the rest of his team. The drag back comes in, and oh my god, the damage is there gonna be a crit this time? Not really, but Ace is still on the retreat. Chased by a couple of blasts. So close to dropping, but he is still alive somehow. Couldn't be with the hex, possibly can join in the face. That's just dead though. That's a big death for the Tundra side. They're playing with two substitutes at the moment. Granted. They are some top tier uh, substitutes. Nightfall, of course, with Bet who got first place at the uh, Eastern European DPC. As an off laner, though, and now he's playing a safe lane. But uh, they're gonna go in with the axe. The taunt comes out. The control isn't gonna be enough. Snaking's already dead. 33's on the run. The group mother is gonna get taken down. And is there gonna be any more shenanigans? Yes, Saxa should be a third one to BB. Without the temp uh, Terror Blade, they don't have much to fear. On the side of gaming, Gladiator stops and he's gonna get controlled. Doesn't have his BKB available, and that's gonna be three and uh, four kills. As uh, there's so many heroes with passives, they're going to want to break in this lineup. And the fact that Scotty isn't enough is a little concerning. Oh, Quinn. They're going to immediately go for the spike. Yeah, has the dead. vision for the tight under follow-up. And man, the instant break, they're able to easily take Quinn down. No way for him to respond. And and uh, the Husker ulti would be perfect because then he'd taunt himself, sort of. Keep himself occupied. They're going to charge in onto the high ground. Can't get the damage in. The break is there. The damage is significant. Quinn is being slowed down. There's a break stolen in the process. The charge is going deeper with the refresher used from Thompson. Double kill secured. Dodson in the building. Nightfall trying to map fight up against the Ratchet. Does still have a Sunder available, but Thompson's going to get control on the side. He got a little bit too greedy, a little bit too far. The hook comes in. Saxa is going to get control. Nice. Drag back out of there. The Tom comes into play for Quinn. Does he get the control? And actually, Quinn is going to die. That's going to be a dieback as well. The Ratchet with the buyback. Hook back onto the high ground. Timbersaw needs to disengage. They bought back a mass for the game gladiator side. But they will finally get themselves in control. The Ace is going to get popped in TV without the metamorphs. Is in no TV no longer. The X comes out immediately and finally they do man get full secure. But it did cost them three buybacks. And a bit concerning. How do they break through him? That's going to be oh, the challenge. Nice they catch. take the team fight. In. They're going in, Nightfall with again the BKB pop going in, but the Aeon Disc popped by Garacho, is it going to keep him alive? No, it's not! Oh, the Refresher! Garacho is going to try and stay alive for a little bit longer, gets the blink back! The Refresher keeps him going, but the rest of the team is in trouble because they do not have their punch available anymore. He cannot do much except for Hook Quinn out of arm's way. Ace gets the on snaking in the process, but they're chasing for more. Sox out with the control. Is it possible to keep them at their back and arms? It will be a two-for-one trade. Uh, essentially a huge objective at this point in the game. 33 is not yeah, there. That's what the focus is. TP back oh the boy, they're pushing in. Oh, good sentry. Able to get to sleep early, but it forces the blink out. They're able to expose this Ricky. And now we start from what Duracho, could be the last team fight. But he's in trouble. Duracho is going to get controlled up. The fight goes onto the side. Quinn is already dead. No buyback available for Quinn. They tried to keep their heroes alive, but Duracho, what might it have cost? It might have cost them the entire game. Duracho is going to get overwhelmed, does also not but not have a buyback available, and he's still on the dieback timer right now. A thousand gold off of it. Tofu, the man that got caught, cost them so much. Three.
on towards the bottom to secure Megas before Duraccio will be respawned because he's 800 gold away and he will not get it back in time. They're actually going to go in on to Quinn. He's going to get broken. Quinn, the four staffs do it. They keep him alive. No, they do not. The Husker is just easy fodder. And with that metamorphosis, they should manage to most likely get themselves at the very least Megas, if not more. They are keeping uh, the TV occupied quite significantly, though. Nightfall. They're able to keep this fight going for so long. Oh, the lift up drag back. The damage is an end. The counter. The third. The ace kill has been secured. A seven kill streak. That's how long he's been alive. Has come through, but he was the one with a vital available drive. He's going to go in onto the TV. Nightfall. Can he get the sunder off? He does get the full sunder off. Heels back to aces. Full HP. Garage with the pressure. Has to run away. No vital for ace. Charge forward. She got it. He's going to get the pulverized smackdown coming in. Moses was too late. And they find Duraccio, no buybacks available, and the team's no chance available here. The Cayman Gladiators. So, without the substitutes, Cayman Gladiators stomp Tundra. With the two subs, they managed to take game number one.